Shalom, everyone. Uh, we're continuing our limit of Sefer Yeshayo. We're up to Perek Lamed Zion. We are in the middle of a very exciting story, a story that the Navi had been talking about throughout the uh, Sefer until now, and now it's actually happening. Uh, this story is also recounted in Sefer Malachim Beis and in Sefer Divrei Hayamim, but the account in Yeshayo is the earliest account because Sefer Yeshayo was written before uh, the other Sfarim. If you recall, Sancheirev has already exiled the ten tribes. He has destroyed Malchus Yisrael. And now he has turned towards Malchus Yehuda. And he has captured all of those cities except for Yerushalayim. He sends his general Rav Shoka, who according to Chazal is Yisrael Mummer, to kind of demoralize the people by saying Hashem is not going to help you and uh, Mitzrayim is not going to help you and you might as well surrender and then I won't destroy you and I will just exile you to another land. And uh, Chizkiyo's advisors are not, have now come to Chizkiyo, Kuru'e Begodim, their garments are ripped in mourning both for the uh, sorrow that they're under and as Rashi says, because of the Chilul Hashem and the Chiruf Vigiduf of Rav Shaka, who said that if the gods of the other nations didn't help their nations, why should the God of Israel help the Jews? In other words, he is equating Chas V'Shalom HaKadosh Baruch Hu with all of the worthless Avedah Zorah, and that's a Chiruf Vigiduf. So, Chizkyo gets this message, and Pasuk Aleph, Perak Lametzayin, begins... When Chizkiyo hears this, he too rips his garments just as they have done. And he put on sackcloth. And he went to the Beis HaMikdash to be Mispalo. And Chizkiyo sent El Yochim, who is in charge of the palace, Shevna, who is in charge of the uh, government documents. Now it's interesting, Yayach, the secretary, is not mentioned here. Shevna is, and I, I don't really have a shot here, because if anybody would be excluded, perhaps it ought to be Shevna, who in fact becomes a traitor. I'm not sure why Yayach was excluded. But it says, El Yochim, Shevna, and the elders of the Kehanim were dressed in sackcloth, and Chizkiyo went to the Mikdash to pray, but he sent them to Yeshayo ben Amay Sanovi. So this part of the book is history. This is not a nevuah necessarily. Uh, there's a narrative. They went to Yeshayo. Vayim Ru'elaf. And they said to Yeshayo, Kayamar Chizkiyo. This is what Chizkiyo says. Yom Tzara v'teichecho na'atza yom azah. This is a day of adversity. This is a day of Hashem's rebuke to us. Na'atza. This is the day in which we have been shamed and humiliated. Ki bo bonim ad mashper v'kayach ayin l'leida. This is an expression uh, when a woman is pregnant and the bonim, the children inside of her are trying to come out. Uh, the bonim have come uh, all the way to the birthing stool. But the mother has no strength to deliver the baby. And God forbid she will die in childbirth. We have a mashber, we have a crisis. And we don't have a kayach to go beyond the crisis. Ulai. This is Chizkiyo's message to Yeshayahu. Yishma Hashem Eleikecha Estivrei Rav Shaka. Perhaps HaKadosh Baruch Hu will hear the Bizyaynes. Of course Hashem hears, but he'll pay attention, he'll act on it. The Bizyaynes of Rav Shaka, Asher Shalacha Melech Hashur Adonav, L'charef Elokim Chai, that the king of Assyria, his master, sent him L'charef to blaspheme the eternal God. V'aychiach B'dvarim and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will be Mochiach, will rebuke and chastise Assyria. Asher Shama Hashem Elokecha, because Hashem has heard these words. V'nasasa tfila biyad asheris hanimtza. And you, the Navi, will carry a prayer for the remnant that remains. Because after all, even Malchus Yehuda was largely destroyed. 
we only have Yerushalayim. So again, Chizkiyo is basically saying, we as a nation are undeserving of Yeshua. But perhaps Hashem will give us a Yeshua because of the Rishus of the Chira Fagiduf, so his name should not be desecrated, and the Kayach of the Tefillah of the Navi. So Chizkiyo is not claiming any credit in terms of his own Maisim Tevin, and he's not saying the Jewish people are deserving, but the Rishus of Sadcherev and Rav Shaka coupled with the Kayach of Tefillah of Yeshayo, perhaps you bring a Yeshua. So that is Chizkiyo's message that should be conveyed to the Navi. And we're told, the Yavayu Avdei Amela Chizkiyo El Yeshayo. The servants of Chizkiyo came to Yeshayo and they gave him the message. Vayaymer Aleim Yeshayo and Yeshayo then said to them, Kai Saimrun El Adeinechem. This is what you shall say to your master, Chizkiyo. So Yeshayo got this benavua, obviously. Kai Amar Hashem. So says HaKadosh Baruch Al tira mibnei hadvarem asher shamata. Do not be afraid because of the words that you heard. Asher gidfu nare melech asher That the young kids of the king of Assyria have blasphemed. So again, Derech Bizayan. These big shots are Narim. Little kids. Hinini Naisain by Ruach Vishama Shemua Vishav El Artso Vipaltiv Bacherev Biartsai. So this is a very difficult Pasuk because this does not actually correspond uh, with the full event, but here is what it says. Behold I will put a spirit in Sancheriv. He will get certain news. He will have to go back to his country, Assyria, and he will be killed in his own country. Now, it didn't quite happen that way, and and now we're going to explain what happened. It is true that Sancheriv, Rav Shaka, they have to cancel uh, their war against Yerushalayim. And it is true that Sancheirev eventually goes back to Assyria and gets killed. But there are some steps in between. And the steps in between are now spelled out in Pasuk Ches. Vayashav Rav Shaka. When Rav Shaka went back to Lachish in Syria and gave Sancheirev the news... Uh, that uh, he's ready to attack. Vayimtsa es melech ashor nilcham alivna kishama kinasa milachish. So Rav Shaka is going back to Lachish, but then he hears that Sancheriv moved his army from Lachish to Livna. Livna is near Mitzrayim because there is a local rebellion in Mitzrayim and Kush against Sancheriv that Sancheriv wants to put down before he comes back to Yerushalayim. So essentially, Yerushalayim initially gets a respite. Vayishma al Tirhaka Melech Kush Lemor. Sancheriv had heard about King Tirhaka, the king of Kush, Kush is Ethiopia. That Yatza he was told that Tirhaka is rebelling against you. Uh, and as a result, uh, Sancheriv moved his army to Livna, which is in the direction of Kush. And Rav Shaka followed Sancheriv. So initially, the Jewish people think, oh, Baruch Hashem, Sancheriv and Rav Shaka and their armies are gone. Right? And that's the first part of what Yeshayo said, that he will have a Shemua and leave. But that's not the source of the Yeshua. Because all the way from Livna, Sancheriv sent a message. Vayishma, Vayishlach, Malachim el Chizkiyo, Lamar, this is Sancheriv now. Kay Saimrin el Chizkiyo, Melchiyu de Lamar. Al Yeshiyacha, Lekacha, Shertabhech, Bar Lamar, Lotinas in Yerushalayim, Biad Melech Hashor. 
don't let your own God fool you that Yerushalayim will not, not be delivered. In other words, don't think that this means anything. I'm coming back. You have heard that all the kings of Ashur, my predecessors, Shalmanesar, Tiglas Pelesar, you know what they've done to all the lands to destroy them. You think you're going to be saved? Again, this is very similar to what Rav Shaka said, but now it's coming from Sancheirev, who is being distracted in a campaign against Mitzrayim and Kush. This is a list of cities. Did the gods of the nations that my forefathers destroyed, Gozen, Choran, Choran is uh, the place of Lavan, Retsev, B'nai Eden, in Talasar, Ayei Melech Hamas, Melech Arpad, Melech Leir, Sefar Vayim, where are these great kings? None of their gods helped them. Again, spoken like an Ovid of Avedazara. Why should your God help you? I am stronger than their gods. I am stronger, chas v'shalom, than your God. So this is the message. So even though there's a respite, the armies are not here. The armies of Sancheirev have been diverted. But Sancheirev sends messages to Chizkiyo, don't think it is over. So Chizkiyo once again comes back to the Beis HaMikdash. So apparently he was not a Kohen, but the Mikdash was a Makam of Tefillah for him, just as Shlomo HaMelech said. Vayik, when he dedicated the first Mikdash, Vayikah Chizkiyo es Asfarim miyad Malachim. Chizkiyo took the documents, the messages, the letters he got from the Shaluchim, and he read them. Vayal Beis Hashem. He went back to the Beis HaMikdash. Vayifraseyu Chizkiyo lifnei Hashem. And he spread, remember these were like scrolls, he spread the scrolls in front of the Beis HaMikdash. Now again, this might mean in front of the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Now he, he wasn't a Kohen, so he couldn't enter the Hechel, so presumably he was in Ezra's Yisrael. And now Chizkiyo prays. Now again, you have to understand what's going on. Yeshayo's Nevoah, for reasons I don't know exactly, was somewhat ambiguous because it seemed to convey the idea See, the question is, why isn't Chizkiyo Batuach in the Nevu of Yeshayo? Because Yeshayo seemed to say, when Sancheirev leaves, he's going to get killed and will not be a threat anymore. That seems to be the Nevu that Yeshayo gave, but now it appears that that Nevu is not going to be Mekoyim because Sancheirev is coming back and Sancheirev did not return to Assyria. So now Chizkiyo is worried perhaps the Nevu is not going to be Mekoyim. So he himself Davins by Yispalel Chizkiyo El Hashem Lamar Hashem Tzavakais Elokei Yisrael Yeshev Akruvim Hashem of the armies of the world the powers of the world the God of Israel who dwells among the cherubs, meaning the makam of the Shekhinah is above the Arain between the two Kruvim. Atahu Elokim You are the only God, the supreme power, for all the kingdoms of the world. Atah Sisa Eshamayim V'Yasa'aretz You made the heaven and the earth. Hate Hashem Oznecha Ushama. Incline your ear and hear our prayer. Pekach Hashem Einecho Ure'e. Open up your eyes and see. Of course, Hashem hears and Hashem sees, but it means act upon it. Ushama es divrei sancheirev asher sholach lechavei velokim chai. So again, he's not saying we have merit. But listen to the chiruf and the giduf and the blasphemy and the bizayness that sancheirev is now doing. Before it was Rav Shaka, and now it's Sancheirev. 
And now he says the argument that Sancheriv makes is no makes no sense. Omnam Hashem Hichrivu Malcha Yashur is color of those Yeah Hashem, of course it's true that the kings of Ashur were able to destroy all other lands. And their gods and their idols were burnt with fire. But that's because lo Elohim heima, they are not God. They are simply made by people. Eitz uh, wood and stone. And they were able to destroy them. But you, Hashem, are real. V'yato Hashem alekeinu hoshienu miyadai. Save us from his hand. Why? Not because we're worthy and not because we deserve it. But vayedu kol mamlechai sa'aretz. So that all the nations of the world will know you are the true God. That no idol, no false God was able to save their nation. But you, if you save us, you will show the world that you are the true God. So this is Chizkiyot's prayer in the Beis HaMikdash. And now he gets another prophecy from Yeshayahu. Vayishlach Yeshayahu ben Amotz el Chizkiyo Lemar, Kayamar Hashem Elokei Yisrael, Asher is Palalta Elai el Sancheiruv Melech Hashor. So says Hashem, you have davened to me about Sancheiruv. Zeh Davor Asher Dibur Hashem Elav. And this is what Hashem says about Sancheiruv. Baza lecha, you will be shamed. Laga lecha, you will be mocked. Besulat bas Sion acharecha reishinia bas Yerushalayim. The virgin, that means the pure, uncorrupted daughter of Sion. Again, the Jewish people, even in their sins, are holy and beloved, like a besula that has never been touched by uh, any other man. After you, they will shake their head. Again, this is an expression that when someone has undergone an extreme destruction, we shake their head in ama- we shake our heads in amazement. Ay, 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 ay. The basula spasiyin will shake its head in amazement, contemplating your destruction. Bas Yerushalayim. Es mi cheiravta v'gidavta. So again, it's as if the Navi is talking to Sancheirev, although this is a message to Chizkiyo. Who have you blasphemed? Who have you insulted? Almi harimai sakayel. Who do you dare lift your voice? Tvatisa maro meinachal kedosh Yisrael. You lift up your eyes to the sky as if you could curse the Holy One of Yisrael. Biyad avodecha cheiravta Hashem. And not only do you do it, but you send your avadim, Rav Shaka, to do it. Vatimer, and you say, Bereiv Rikhbi ani alisi maraim harim yarkasei levanan. And you say, because of the power of my chariots, I can ascend up to the highest mountains. That's the Harabayas, the Mikdash. You say, you can go to the Mikdash, yarkasei levanan. The ends of Lebanon. Again, so Lebanon here does not mean levanan. But it's the Beis Hamikdash that is called Levanon uh, because it's Malbin, it whitens and atones uh, for the sins of Am Yisrael. So you think you can conquer Yerushalayim and destroy the Beis Hamikdash. V'yechreis kaimas arazav, and you say you can cut down the high cedars, meaning the tzaddikim. Mifchar bereshav, the choice Cypresses, again, big, powerful trees. The Avai Maraim Kitsai, and you say you could go to the heights. Yar Karmilai, the beloved forest of God. Again, this is a reference to the Beis Hamikdash. Ani, and you, again, this is all putting words in Sancheirev's mouth, words of arrogance, words of gaiva. Ani Karti Vishasisi Mayim. I can dig and get whatever water I want. And all of the water supplies that any population has that fights me, 
I can dry up by just the number of foot soldiers walking through the pool. In other words, I have unlimited power, just as one who digs a well constantly finds water. And those other na- my enemies that have the water, I can dry it up. I am in charge. So what does Hashem say to him? This is the Navi telling Chizkiyo what HaKadosh Baruch Hu essentially says about Sancheirev. Halay shamata lemeirachayk aysa asisa. Have you not heard, have you not understood that whatever success you have achieved I decreed a long time ago that because of the sins of the ten tribes or the sins of the other nations, you are just a pawn in my hand to carry out my will. Whatever you've done, all the way back from the beginning of time, I knew what would happen. I saw Sisi. I did it. From ancient days, I created it. Ata hevisia, and now it's coming to pass. Uzehi lahashe iskalim, nitzim, orim b'tzuros, that you're given the power to take fortified cities, orim b'tzuros, and make them galim, make them piles of rubble, nitzim, with flowers growing. Meaning, yeah, you're doing so much. It's only because I gave you the power for my cheshbonos. The Yishveyan and all of the inhabitants of these cities, Kitzrayad, uh, Kitzrayad meaning their hands are short, meaning they're not able to fight you. Chatu, they've been broken. Vavayshu, they've been shamed. Hayu Esaf Asada, they are like the grass of the field. Virak Desha, Chatsir Gagais Ushteima Lifnei Kama. They are like dried up grass and therefore they're powerless but it has nothing to do with you. Everything you do, where you sit, where you go, where you come, I knew all of this. All of this is planned. And in addition, I know how much you try to anger me. And Yan, his ragetz chayilai. And because you have angered me through your blasphemy, vishanancha Allah biaznai, and your tranquility, your complacency, your sense that you are batuach on the top of the world, vesamti hachi biapecha. I am putting the hook in your nose and the bridle, like a horse, in your mouth, and I will bring you back to the place where you came from. Again, let me just explain this. Sancheirev and his army left Yerushalayim to fight a conflict with Tirhaka, the king of Cush, but Sancheirev sends a threatening letter that he is going to come back to Yerushalayim to finish the job. What Yeshayo is communicating to, uh, to Chizkiyo is, do not be afraid. It's the other way around. Hashem, so to speak, is dragging him back. Sancheirev thinks he wants to go. In fact, this is going to be his downfall. His downfall will be the destruction of his army at the gates of Yerushalayim. So what Sancheirev thinks is his great military accomplishment. What Sancheirev thinks is his decision to go and destroy Yerushalayim. It's Hashem bringing him back so his army will be destroyed. And that's the beautiful mashal. It is like a hook that you put uh, in the nose of an animal or a fish, to drag it. It is like a bridle by which you pull a horse. And that's how you're going to come back. You're not coming back because you want to come back. Now, you're coming back because you think you want to come back. In fact, I am manipulating you 
like a puppet. Okay. So in a sense, now again, none of this is said to Sancheirev. This is said to Chizkiyahu, but in a way this is going to comfort him, that don't be afraid that Sancheirev is coming back. This will be the instrument, not of his destruction, he gets killed in Assyria, but this will be the instrument of his army's destruction. Now, then it says, now he's talking to Chizkiyahu, not Sancheirev. So until now he was talking to Sancheirev, at least uh, allegorically. Now he goes back, the Novi goes back to Chizkiyahu. And this will be a sign for this Nebuah. This year you will eat from the wild growths. The next year you will eat from the seeds that dropped off of the wild growths. And the third year, zero, you will be able to plant the Kitzru and harvest and uh, plant vineyards, now, this Pasuk is very, very difficult. If the Navi Yeshayo is saying the sign that this prophecy will come true, that Sancheirev will be destroyed, is the agricultural rejuvenation of the land, you have an obvious problem. This agricultural rejuvenation will be long after the event of Sancheirev. So you can never say an event that will happen later is somehow an os that an earlier event is going to happen. So because of this, the Meforshim types up the words a little differently. V'zeh l'chol l'os, v'zeh is going back on the destruction of Sancheirev. V'zeh the death of Sancheirev will be a simen tov for something else. And that is the following. Chizkiyo has uh, a short-term problem and a long-term problem. The short-term problem, which is very, very serious, is that the huge army of Sancheirev wants to destroy Yerushalayim just as it destroyed the Ten Tribes and it exiled most of Malchus Shehuda outside of Yerushalayim. That is the short-term problem. And that's going to be resolved literally in a few days, as we're going to see. But there's a long-term problem that when Sancheirev destroyed Malchus Shehuda, he destroyed the agricultural productivity of the land. He destroyed the crops. He destroyed the productivity of the soil. So the question is going to be, how am I going to feed my people? How will my people live? Where will they get their grain and their grapes? So Hashem is saying, the mapala of Sancheirev is a sign, a promise that there will be rejuvenation and the rejuvenation will come in several stages. And this will be after Sancheirev falls. The first year, meaning now, you will live from things that, even though you have no seed to plant, but things will grow on their own, like wild growths. Safiach, it's a big term by the laws of Shemitah, and that will be sufficient to feed you. And the next year there will also be Safichim. But by the third year, the land will recover and you will be able to plow it and cultivate it and plant it. And if you wonder how can that be, the first miracle, the downfall of Sancheirev, will be an os for the second miracle. The Yaisva, and what does all of this show? All of this is a mashal for the rejuvenation of the Jewish people as well. Just as the land will rejuvenate its productive capacity, so too the small remnant of Yidin that remains of course, this is before Nebuchadnezzar, but at least in Chizkiyot's time, and potentially that could have been Messianic, will rejuvenate and take root in the soil of Eretz Yisrael. The Yosva, Paleta, Beis Yehuda, Nishara, the small remnant of Beis Yehuda that remains, will have a Sherish, will have a root in the ground. The Yosva, Pri, Lamala, and will produce fruit, Torah and Mitzvahs, above. That from Yerushalayim there will be a Hatzalah. 
So there will be a she'eris, a remnant. There will be a remainder from heart seeing. Let me just point out uh, a simple observation. In Tanakh, heart Sion either means the Temple Mount, Haramoria, Harabayas, or it sometimes refers to Yerushalayim as a whole. Do not confuse the contemporary Mount Zion, Har Zion, with the use of Har Zion in Tanakh. Uh, Mount Zion is actually a Christian designation for the western hill. The Harabayas is on an eastern hill, uh, and uh, Har Zion is on the west. It is actually presently outside of the walls of the old city, although Chizkiyo had enclosed it. And uh, it was called Mount Zion only by the Christians in the Middle Ages, and now we, we call it Hart Sion. But that is not the Hart Sion uh, that is alluded to in Nach. Hart Sion and Nach is either Harabayas or sometimes all of Yerushalayim. And from Yerushalayim and Hart Sion, there will be a Sheiris and a Plata. Kinas Hashem Tzavakos, Tasezais. It is the zealousness of God for his people that will do this. So that'll be the os, the agricultural productivity. In other words, the, hatsa, the, de, the destruction of Sancheira will be an ice for the productivity, and the productivity will be an ice for the rejuvenation of the people. And therefore, bottom line, this is Yeshayo to Chizkiyo, Lochein, Kayamar Hashem el Melech Ashur, so says Hashem, again, not to Melech Hashur, but about Melech Hashur, Lo Yavai al He will not enter this city. Lo Yairesh Shamchetz, He will not shoot an arrow. Lo Yikad Menem again, None of his shields will enter. Lo Yishbach Allah Sailala, He will not be able to make a mound, right, in order to cr- cross over a wall. Enemies will build mounds that they could climb over. Uh, that's called Sailala. He won't do it. But Derech Asher Ba Ba Yashuv, he will return to Assyria. In fact, that's where he'll die. The Alir Hazai Slo Yavai, no Mashem, says Hashem, he will not even enter Yerushalayim. The Ganaisi Aloir Hazai Slo Hashia, I will protect this city. I will protect it. Lamani, for my sake. So there shouldn't be a Chilul Hashem. So Sancheirov shouldn't be able to say that the God of Israel is no better than any other God. Ulaman David Avdi. And for the merit of David, my faithful servant. Now the Gemara says in Brachas that this is a little Musr to Chizkiyo because Chizkiyo's Tefillah asks Hashem to save the city in his merit. Now Lamai said there's a bit of a kasha. Until now, Chizkiyo's Tefillah did not mention himself. But we're going to see, it's a little Ein Mukta Mumokha B'tayra, we're not going in full chronological sequence, that Chizkiyo will incorporate in some of his prayers that his own Zechuyais should merit a Yeshua. And the Gemara says, when you're Taila in your own Zechus, Hashem will answer you in the Zechus of Acherim. So Chizkiyo, that was Taila, B'zechus Atzmai, is given a Yeshua in the merit of David. And then, so anticlimactic, because the Navi had been talking about this so many times in prior Prakim, the whole miracle is one Pasuk. Vayetze Malach Hashem Vayake B'machene Ashur Meya Ushmeinem V'chamisha Elef V'yashkimu B'abayker V'hine Kulam Pigarim Mesim. One Pasuk. A Malach of Hashem came as the Assyrian army was encamped outside of Yerushalayim. And in one night, 185,000 soldiers were killed. And in the morning, all there were were corpses. And according to Chazal, this actually happened the first night of Pesach. And even in the Haggadah, at least in the, in the Piyutim, in the songs that we sing at the end, um, it makes a mention of the Mapala of Sancheirev. 
Now, Sadcherif himself did not die. He saw this. And then he returned to his land, as the Navi said. Without an army, he went back to his capital. Right? Ninveh is the capital of Ashur. He is bowing down uh, in the temple of Nisroch, his Getchka, his Avaidazara. Vajra Melech Visaretsar Bonov he called His own children, they wanted to be king. Or Adra Melech and Sharetzar. Some are Gorish Saretzar, some say Sharetzar. They smote him with a sword. But because they were assassins, they were now in danger because Sancheirev had supporters. Haman Nimlatu Eretz Ararat. They ran to the land of Ararat, right? Hararat is where the Noach's Teva rested. Again, people say it's in Turkey. Vayimleich Esar Chadayin B'nai Tachtav. So the actual ruler who replaced Assyria, who replaced Sancheirev, was Esar Chadayin. But for all intents and purposes, there still was a king, a nominal king. But this was the end of the Assyrian Empire. And uh, Babylonia is going, Nebuchadnezzar is going to take over. We're not discussing that now. But this was the great miracle of Yerushalayim being spared. And Chazal say, had the generation been worthy, this could have been the war of Gaig and Magaig. Sadcherev could have been Gaig and Magaik, and Chizkiyo could have been Mashiach, and there would no longer be a Chorban. Unfortunately, we were not worthy, and that's why the years after Chizkiyo are years of Yerida and years of destruction.